Hi you guys, Game Girl 894 here and this is a visual novel game called My Lady. I think this just came out quite recently but it is about a young girl. I think she's in like an aristocratic type lifestyle and she is going to marry I think some suitor that her mother is going to pick for. I think it's meant to be set in like a period probably more likely the 1800s Victorian era were say in bureaucratic type families they would have chosen suitors for their daughters because they're either marrying into wealth or marrying because of business or financial reasons but I think she herself is in love with the butler of her family because she is very close to them and then obviously has a better connection with them so Yep, I'm interested to see how this game is going to turn out, so yep, let's give this game a go and see how it runs. So, let's go to start. Before you start again, please tell us your name and the name of your butler. Right. Yep, Elizabeth will do. I never really choose sort of like names for characters, unless you want to muck about, but just for the sake of the visual novel, novel just to make it a bit more authentic, I'm just going to stick with the default names, which is Elizabeth and Alexander. So you're Elizabeth and your butler is Alexander, yep. Now please know that this story was made in Ren Pai, the visual novel, The Engine, with music composed by Christopher Escalante and voiceover by Bradley Gareth, Hayden Devo and Jonah Scott. Oh yeah guys, this game has voice acting in it, so yeah, this should be really interesting. It costs 79p on Steam, so yeah, it should be good. Let's give us a go and let's get started. Let's begin this visual novel. I sincerely hope you enjoy this short story. Yay! Let's go. Life's not fair, is it? Oh, I'm not sure what you mean, ma'am. I don't even need to do half of this. This game will do it for me. It just isn't. I have riches and power and practically everything I could possibly want. But I don't at the same time. Ah, you're getting me to... Metaphor. You're being silly, ma'am. This was my life, whether I liked it or not. I was an heiress to a rich family. Splendid, no? To many women, this would be, have been a dream come true, the perfect way to spend life. However, it wasn't as loving as one would think. What do you guys think of my English posh accent? Think it's good? I think it's going okay. Ish. Sophie, I'm being serious. Oh, that was a maid talking. Oops. Oh. Of course you are. Of course you are. I'm not saying you aren't. You said I was being silly. But I never said not serious, ma'am, did I? You. You. Aha! See, ma'am, I know you're serious. You're just being silly. There you go again. Sophie was my personal maid, and despite her joke, she was one of my best friends. She has been with me ever since I was a child, and has cared for me like a sister ever since. Sophie has got me out of trouble many times. Even when I was at fault, it's a surprise that she deals with me. Now, now, ma'am, don't get fussy. I was only fooling. Hmm. Still, I am right now, you know. Life isn't fair. Life is never fair, ma'am. It gives you lemons when you want to make orange juice. That's how the saying goes, right? No, that's not how the saying goes. I can't remember how it goes myself, but it doesn't go like that. It's when life gives you lemons, something, something, something. Actually, I might actually look that up later and probably tell you guys what it means in the next video because it's gonna annoy me now since she said that because I know she's not right it's when life gives you lemons make lemonade Sophie yay my character actually knows more than me I like my character Elizabeth is smart but what if I want orange juice then you can't have orange juice that's exactly what I mean it's not fair makes a fair point Oh, ma'am, you're not talking about him again, are you? Of course I was. He was all I could think 
about all I could talk about. Alexander, my personal butler. Alexander was charming and handsome, sophisticated and sweet. He was practically everything I dreamed of in a man, yet despite him always being in arm's reach, he was as far away as I could be. He was devoted to being the perfect servant, even if that meant disobeying any romantic requests. I let out a sigh and looked at Sophie helplessly. I'm hungry, Sophie. Eh, oh, now, ma'am, those puppy eyes won't work on me. I already got you an extra tray of biscuit cookies for your morning tea. Well, I'm fucking hungry again, maid. Hmm. But Sophie... Ah, 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 ah. None of that now. No whining. Sophie... Ah, fine. I'll make you some fruit sandwiches and tea. Yay! I get what I want. I always get what I want. See? Yay! Thank you. Honestly, I spoil you. You love me. Yes, yes, ma'am, I love you. I'll be right back. Sophie left me alone in my room, giving me time to think about Alexander while I sat at my study desk. He was barely three years older than I was, yet he acted like a proper gentleman. The way he smiled practically made my legs weak. His voice made my heart sing in long, blissful arias of affection. I was in love with my butler and I didn't care. The only problem was that he couldn't love me back. Alexander was so invested in becoming the product, the perfect servant, that he denied any romantic gesture I threw his way. The mere thought of the last failure made me slump in my chair. Life's not fair. Suddenly there was a knock at my door. Why did the music stop? Let's see who it is. Your butler, miss. May I come in? That's him? That's his voice? It's okay, but I could think of better voices. My heart stopped. It was him, Alexander. I felt pure elation bubble in my chest. C -c come in, please. The door opened to reveal Alexander, standing at full attention for me with a tray covered in letters in his hand. He took a step into the room, closed the door behind him and walked to the front of my desk. I bet made this silhouette is quite hot looking. I like the I like the hair. I just wish you could actually see the faces of the characters, but I think that's kind of the charm of the game, so yeah, but just aside from the voice, the voice maybe could be a bit better, but let's just see how he speaks a bit more in sentences. My deepest apologies for the interruption, my lady, but I had some letters addressed to you. I came as quick as I received them. I take that back, he's actually quite cute. Uh oh. Thank you. Alexander gently placed the tray on my jet desk in front of me, revealing three letters. One had my family seal, one was pink and practically reeked of flowers, and the last letter was a plain envelope. I'll take the pink letter. I held my breath and opened the letter with my letter opener, taking out the letter parchment and reading the contents of the note. My dear Elizabeth, my name is Isaac Newport. I know that you do not know me, but I hope to know more about you soon. I am currently in town this weekend and would like to request your presence for tea. Please write back soon, Isaac. Another damn suitor. Suitor. Ugh. A suitor? I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with the Newport family. He yeah, actually has such a hot voice. Hmm. Please just those two be together, please. Did I care? I wasn't interested in courting, especially with a man I didn't even know. Besides, the man I wanted to court was in the room with me, and that had already proved to be a difficult challenge as it is. I sighed and placed my hands on the middle of the note, ready to tear it in two. However, Alexander stopped me. Miss, I would suggest holding on to that note. Huh? Why? I'm going to turn him down. Still, if you were to visit, you'll have proven knowledge of who he is rather than forgetting the future. You have such a hard voice. I completely take back everything I said. I'm so sorry. I sighed and placed the note in one of my drawers to obviously be forgotten about later. 
I'll do the plain letter. I'll do the letter with a C last, because that's probably the like more linked one of the story. I carefully opened the letter with my letter opener and took out the letter parchment. It was surprisingly pure white, despite being in a concealed envelope. I read the parchment's contents aloud. The lady exits a pumpkin carriage, Queen to Bishop K. K? What kind of joke was this? Who was K? What was this K getting at? A riddle, perhaps? A riddle for what? This must be a mistake. Who sent this? I look to the envelope for any indication of the sender, but the only thing on the envelope, besides from my address and name, was a giant K wax seal on the corner. Odd. Now I did the final letter. I open the letter gently with my letter opener, taking out the letter parchment and reading its contents. Dear Elizabeth, I will be returning home today from my business trip. Please make sure to clean yourself and dress properly for my arrival. We have much to discuss. Your mother. Oh boy. Guys, here we go. This is going to be... Mother's going to come and say, Elizabeth, you have to get married. You need to, like... Keep up the family wealth, you know, and keep up the name of Elizabeth, whatever the hell your surname is, and adhere to that, and you must not marry any other suitor. I forbid it. But I like my brother. No fair. Your mother is returning. That's wonderful news. My mother had been on a long business trip that lasted almost two weeks. Most likely she would be staying for a couple of days, then she would be off to another business trip that needed her attention. This was the norm with my mother. Being that she single-handedly owned the estate, I had to admit I was lonely without her. However, when she was around, it was stressful. She demanded perfection out of me beyond anything, hoping that eventually I would become a perfect and proper young woman. I had just turned 17. She was perfect when she turned the age of 13. I apparently had a long way to go. Yes. Wonderful. I sighed and slumped in my chair. My mother's returning. I have another damned suitor, and this letter riddle makes me absolute, makes absolutely no sense. The day is starting off marvelously. Is there anything I could do to make you happy, my lady? Yes. Can you please date me? Can you please take off your shirt, please? And can I like see a skin tone to that, to that black silhouette of a body, please? Oh, what am I gonna pick? Oh, oh god! Right, okay. Uh, gee. I really want to pick the top one, but I don't know. Ah. Uh, screw it, I'm going for the top one. Alexander cleared the soap, making me quit my teeth in my closed mouth. Please do it, please. I'm afraid I cannot, my lady. Why? Please? Why? Because I am your butler, you are my lady, it would be improper. You have such a hot voice, please. I looked down at my desk. I wanted to protest, but after so many failures, I had practically given up trying to fight his stubbornness. I stood and walked around my desk, wanting some fresh air. Tell Sophie that. Whoa! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I suddenly felt myself falling, my foot slipping out from underneath me. I quickly grabbed for something and tried to maintain my balance. Please kiss. This is like such a good reason to kiss. Please. Please. It would like so make my day. And guys, I'm sure it would make your day as well because this is cute. What I didn't realize was that I grabbed Alexander and had pulled him down over on top of me. Uh, oh, I, uh. My lady, are you alright? Oh, I have to pick again. Oh. I am not. I'm just going to be so bold with us. I stared up at Alexander, who surprisingly didn't move. I enjoyed this sight a bit too much. So am I. I'm really enjoying this sight. What do you guys think? I love this sight. So cute. 
How I wished he was open to my affections, however he continued to stir in concern for my well-being. I was just fine, especially with him over me like this. The door opened again, forcing Alexander and me to look up towards it in shock. Ma'am, I brought you... Oh, oh my. Th this isn't what it looks like. I blushed a deep red. I have to... I'd have him on top of me was one thing. To have Sophie with see was another. <laughs> Alexander quickly stood up and helped me get up, gently brushing us both off as Sophie bit her lip with a grin. No worries, ma'am. I didn't say anything, I swear. <laughs> I glared at Sophie, knowing she was stifling laughter. I looked at Alexander after sighing. He was completely straight-faced as if nothing had happened between him and I. I sighed quietly to myself before looking back at Sophie. <laughs> Sophie was slowly calming down from her hold on her laughter, but she still had the cracked smile on her lips. Well, if you both will excuse me, I need to prepare lunch for Lady Beaumont's arrival. No, 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 don't go. Please stay, please stay, please stay. I want you to stay. Alexander bowed to me quickly before I was in the room, closing the door behind him. <laughs> As the sound of his footsteps is heard, Sophie burst into laughter. <laughs> Sophie, you bitch, if you tell, you're fired. Trust me. <laughs> this is more embarrassing for me. Why am I embarrassed? I'm not even in the game. What would have happened while I was away? Were you trying to seduce him again, ma'am? <laughs> no. That was not what I was trying to do at all. No, oh, it was fine. What? Sophie? That was hilarious, ma'am. <laughs> I glared at her once again, making her stop and bring her laughter to a soft chuckle. So, ma'am, I brought some sweet sandwiches and tea for you. Strawberries with a fresh hazelnut spread. Oh, wow. Thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. They look nice. I sat back down at my desk and watched Sophie place down the plate of tea sandwiches and tea in front of me over the tray Alexander had brought me. Any fancy mail today, ma'am? Yes, from a creep, from a randomer, and from a bitch. Or a cunt. Yes, a cunt would be a good word. Okay, I have three different things to talk about, but guys, I'm actually going to end the episode here because I don't want this to kind of overrun to like where it becomes like 20 minutes or half an hour long. But anyway, wowie, I am loving this game so far and I really want Elizabeth and Alexander to get together so much because I didn't know about his voice at the beginning, but it actually is so hot and I really, really want them to get together. And I know that her mother is going to be a cunt and a bitch and someone I don't like. And I think this here story is going to be having like a very interesting plot to it. And I think it is going to develop a lot more. And I don't think the voice acting is actually that bad. Like for a 79p game, it is definitely worth it. Worth it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to see me continue on with this game, then please feel free to leave a comment in the section below just saying you would like me to do a second part of this game. And... If not, then that's fine. If you like the video, please feel free to leave a like. And if you like the, video, the videos I do, please feel free to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Ta-ra, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.